I believe we can end things here. It's not often that we get to enjoy the company of guests, after all. We wouldn't want things to get too out of hand. <coughs> Brother, are you all right? Lenny. Given that I am the victor of this duel, as agreed, the punishment stands. No! I never thought things would end like this. However, everyone involved in the duel demonstrated a remarkable level of strength and determination. In light of this, I'm prepared to change the method of execution. Elwar, the bottled flames I gave you for safekeeping. Do you still have them? Y yes I wasn't sure what they were for, but I've kept them super safe. I didn't lose a single one. Wonderful. Then, in just a moment, I'll have you administer them. Bottled flames? Indeed. They're the product of a secret experiment. Under certain special circumstances, flames can be extracted from my person and preserved. Once ingested, searing pain will spread across every inch of your body. No harm will come to you physically, but your memories will be burned away. If you can withstand the pain. When you awake, you'll have forgotten everything you know about the House of the Hearth, and will be expelled from the organization. In other words... Administering this concoction will kill the version of you that grew up in the house, and give you a new identity. Memory is a mysterious thing indeed. Losing a portion of your memories will alter your sense of self. So... you're just... letting us go, Father? You misunderstand. Memories are extremely important. Once consumed by flame, the version of you standing before me will die, and our secrets will die with you. So no, I don't intend to just let you go, because the person who survives will be nothing but a stranger. Even so... even so... I won't have to live in fear anymore. I'm sorry, Father. I'm sorry I let you down, but I... I really... Don't cry, Filial. You haven't left the house yet, so there are still rules to be followed, yes? Remember what I taught you. Anger makes you impulsive, sorrow causes you to waver. Don't let yourself be controlled by your emotions. Of course. <laughs> I'll remember. Dry your tears, and go pursue the life you really want. Yes, Father. Chaplot, Foltz, Elwar, take them back to Poisson. And bring Lenny and the others as well. I prepared three extra vials of bottled flames. As for whether to take them, the choice is yours. Goodbye, children. The next time we meet, I will no longer be your father. Thank you for all you've done for the house. I hope you have bright futures ahead of you. Father... Let's go. Here! Grab my arm, Lenny. I'll help you walk back. Thank you. Claire V.
Can we talk now? I've been waiting for a super long time. You really are Perry, aren't you? I haven't seen you in so long. How come you're all grown up? Wait, did I somehow travel to the future on accident? Or am I dreaming? <sighs> what a long dream. Neither. You died, Clairvy. That's what happened. You could have at least sugarcoated it a little! Look, she said speechless! Uh, oh. Okay, then. Huh? That's it? You accepted it just like that? Yep. If that's what Perry says happened, then I believe her. Perry wouldn't lie to me. Plus, I don't really need to know why I'm like this. I'm more curious about what happens in the future. If you're a harbinger now, Perry, that means Mother is gone, isn't she? Can you tell me about it? I want to know what happened to her. And to me. You never stopped trying to defy fate. At first, no one believed you. You could only vent your frustrations to the moon. In fact, you often sought comfort in the night sky. You wanted to see the Aurora, so one night we promised each other we would go to Snezhnaya to see it together. Later on, you tried to run away, but you were brought back each time. Mother spared your life, but it wasn't out of kindness. Instead, she decided to make an example of you by slowly torturing you over time. That way, the other children would know what happens to traitors. Still, you never gave up. Mother hoped that through ruthless duel after ruthless duel, she would be able to crown an ultimate victor among the children she raised. But you called on everyone to unite, to fight to a draw in order to reduce casualties. Your efforts may have only delayed the inevitable, but still. You gave them hope. You tried everything you could think of, but every attempt ended in failure. Still, you never turned your sword on Crucibina, and you never turned it on me. On that gloomy day, you told me, For the last sixteen years of my life, I've done everything I can to fight for freedom. But now, I realize that the only freedom I truly possess is the freedom to choose to die. I never imagined I would say something like that. I must have been feeling really worn down. But somehow, I still think I understand. According to Mother's plan, only one of us was going to make it until the end. And I always hoped that person would be you. If I could do it all over again, I still don't think I would make a different choice. Even when I first met you, I knew you'd be able to do what I couldn't. Is that so? Even now, I'm not sure I truly understand what kind of freedom you were trying to pursue. But as the head of the House of the Hearth, and as the children's father, I've tried to give them the most basic of freedoms. The freedom to choose their own fate. It's something I discussed with the Udex of Fontaine. The children who want to leave the house will have their memories wiped clean of all secrets pertaining to the organization. In return, they will be allowed to live a normal life in Fontaine without being prosecuted for their past. Of course, I won't simply hand freedom to them on a silver platter. They have to fight for it and prove themselves worthy of it. Only freedom that is earned has true value. That's more than enough. That's exactly the kind of life I was fighting for. You know, Perry, I think you're a pretty amazing king, and a really great father, too. I'm really happy that you're the one who took over the house. I guess I do have one regret, though. I still haven't seen the outside world. Well, it just so happens that our dear guests over here have been to many nations and traveled to countless places. Perhaps they would be willing to tell you what the outside world is like. Really? Of course! We've traveled all over the place!
place. We've got so many stories, we could probably talk your ears off for three days straight! 